Hey Mike, uh, great videos. Um, I'm really excited because I think you've definitely hit the nail on the head here. Um, modern neuroscience and cognitive science have definitely shown that all of our experiential states, our joys, our sorrows, our sense of personal identity, these are all really states of, of the nervous system. Uh, what they seem to have left out though is that so too are all of our physical experiences. The world that we see out there, um, the things that we hold in our hands, all of our physical sensations are, are also states of our nervous system. Um, Alan Watts wrote a book called uh, The Book on the Taboo Against Knowing Who You Are and one of the chapters is called The World is Your Body. And I think uh, the intuition behind that statement is, um, is pretty right on. Um, and he wrote that, you know, in, in the 60s, so he was way ahead of his time. But um, there's a field of cognitive science, actually, called inactivism, which uh, comes out of a book written in 1991 or 92 called The Embodied Mind, um, by, written by Francisco Varela, uh, Eleanor Roche, and Evan Thompson. And the idea is that the approach that neuroscientists and cognitive scientists have been taking to understanding how the brain creates the mind is, uh, is wrong. Because the traditional approach is to think of the brain as a computer, as a representational system which um, takes in information from a pre-existing external world and represents it internally uh, by building some kind of model of that world in, in the brain and um, you know artificial intelligence uh, computer scientists took this and tried to build uh, robots that could navigate the world by doing just that and they found that it's just too um, computationally expensive uh, in other words it just requires too much uh, computing power to actually represent the intricate details of this world um, in a in a internal representational language it's just in, it's impossible to do so that pursuit um, was kind of um, put on the back burners they did come up with uh, connectionist models which would attempt to do the same thing and that's what the churchlands are working on but it still makes the assumption that the physical world um, is out there and truly objective that it exists independently of the organisms which uh, are aware of it, that that physical stuff is is something totally separate from, you know, supposedly immaterial perception. Um, but what uh, Varela and his colleagues were trying to show was that um, the world is our bodies in the sense that we don't experience anything but the state of our own nervous system. And so this is a paradigm shift in the sense that we have to move away from thinking that there could be this objective physical world and instead do what uh, Varela called um, objectivity in parentheses, meaning we assume that there's an objective world out there and we continue to do science and you know the similar way that we've always done it, but we don't um, assume a priori that the world exists independently of perceiving subjects. Um, I unfortunately don't have the book The Embodied Mind. Um, I read it when I was still in uh, attending a university by checking out of the library. It's a really expensive book. But um, this book uh, by Fritjof Capra called The Web of Life has a lot of um, uh, talks a lot about uh, this this idea of an active cognition and actually um, Varela's uh, teacher Humberto Maturana was the one that came up with the groundwork for this theory and I wanted to quote what he said um, Maturana postulated that the nervous system is not only self-organizing but also continually self-referring so that perception cannot be viewed as the representation of an external reality but must be understood as the continual creation of new relationships within the neural network. And this is a quote of Maturana. The activities of nerve cells do not reflect an environment independent of the living organism and hence do not allow for the construction of an absolutely existing external world. According to Maturana, perception and more generally cognition do not represent an external reality, but rather specify one 
through the nervous system's process of circular organization. So this, I think, embodies the paradigm shift that uh, needs to occur before consciousness can be understood um, in uh, a coherent way. So um, yeah, let me know what you think. Take it easy.